this video, we're going to be adding in the plugins needed to finish up our site's content. At this point, you should have a hosted WordPress site set up with a number of pages and a theme selected. If not, check out the earlier videos in this tutorial series. Before we get started with searching for, installing, and activating plugins on our site, it makes sense to take a couple of minutes to explain what WordPress plugins are. When it was first created, WordPress was designed as a blogging platform, meaning that by default, WordPress comes with almost everything you need to run a simple blog. Over time, WordPress has become the most popular online platform to build a wide variety of websites. Plugins are tools, many of which are available for free, that add functionality to websites beyond just posting, updating, and removing content. They come in all different shapes and sizes, from small things like adding a contact form to your website, all the way up to adding an e-commerce store to your site. We've got an entire tutorial series on when a plugin is the right tool for the job, and how to know which plugin to choose, but we'll go over the basics here. If there's something that you want to let visitors do on your website other than just read your content and leave comments, a plugin is probably the way to go. When you're choosing which plugin in particular to go with for your site, you can browse the plugin's details to look for a number of things similar to what you'd look for when hunting for a theme. First off, does the plugin do what you want it to do? For example, if you need an FAQ section, make sure that the plugin can actually add FAQs to your site. This one seems intuitive, but a lot of people waste time thinking that a plugin is broken when actually it's working perfectly, it's just not made to do what you want it to do. Next, check to see how many installs the plugin has and whether it's well reviewed or not. Pretty straightforward. It's also a good idea to see if there's support for the plugin by checking its support form and seeing if questions are being answered. Finally, take a look at the screenshots to see if the plugin looks like it's a good fit for your site and if it can be customized. A lot of plugins will also have a demo site set up so checking that out can be a good idea as well. Now that we've got an idea what we're looking for, let's add a few plugins that will be important to running our e-commerce website. We want people to be able to browse and buy products on our site, so we'll be adding in the WooCommerce plugin to do that. Hearing from other customers what they thought of a product can be the difference between making a sale or not, so we'll want to add a review plugin to our site as well. Next, customers often have questions they want answered before purchasing. So we'll help to answer those questions in two ways. First, we're going to add an FAQ plugin so that customers can find answers to their questions quickly and without any effort on your part. Second, we'll add a contact form so that any questions missing from your FAQ can be asked directly. Finally, we'll add a way for customers to track their orders through your site using an order tracking plugin. We'll add one plugin at a time and set up each plugin as we go. To get started adding those plugins, head to the WordPress admin area and go to Plugins, Add New. For our contact form, we'll use WP Forms. It's well reviewed, so type WP Forms into the search box, click Install Now, and then once it's installed, press Activate. You should see a helpful installation screen come up which we'll use to create our first form. Click the Create Your First Form button and select Simple Contact Form as a template. This form has most of the fields that we want for our contact form, name, email, and message, but it could be good to add in a subject field as well. Click on Single Line Text and drag it to just below email. Click on it and change the title to Subject. Let's also make sure that the contact form gets sent to the right email once it's submitted. Click on Settings, Notifications, and change Admin Email to the email address where you'd like to receive your contact form. Once that's done, click the Save button at the top of the page. Next, click Embed and copy the line of text. The text inside of the brackets is called a shortcode. Shortcodes let you embed content from a plugin into your desired page. Click the X at the top of the page, then navigate to the Pages menu. Click on the Contact Us page we created earlier, and paste the shortcode that we just copied into the page. Open the Contact page in a new tab, and you should now see a contact form on the page. We can try submitting the form, and hopefully you should receive an email with a new contact form submission. If not, check out our video on installing WP Mail SMTP by WP Forms, which can help to prevent problems with emails being caught in spam filters. Next, we'll use the Reviews Ultimate plugin for our reviews, since it's built to work with WooCommerce, which we're using. Search for it, and then click Install and Activate once again. We'll use the Installation Wizard again to get this plugin set up, this time creating a review category called Featured. We're going to use the built-in WooCommerce integration so we won't create review submissions or review display pages for the time being. 
To do that, we'll activate the premium version 7 day trial and enable some of the premium options so that we can get the integration that we want with WooCommerce once it's installed. Go to the dashboard tab of the plugin and click on the start free 7 day trial button. You can open the guide to using the premium version in a new tab if you're looking for tips on how to take advantage of all the premium options, but for now, head to the WooCommerce section of the options tab. Set WooCommerce integration to yes and then click the save button at the bottom of the page. For our FAQs, we'll use the Ultimate FAQs plugin. Once it's installed, go through the installation wizard again. We use the installation screen to create a couple of FAQ categories, as well as a few FAQs. We'll leave most of the settings alone for now, and end the installation screen without creating a new FAQ page. Next, go to the Pages section, open the Frequently Asked Questions page, and add in a new FAQ block to the page. Update the page, and you should see that your FAQs are displayed when you open it in a new tab. We're also going to activate the free trial so that we can create individual FAQs for our products in our WooCommerce store. Go to the Options tab and toggle on WooCommerce FAQs. If you need help with how to add FAQs to products, check out our product FAQs video linked to in the description below. Finally, let's get WooCommerce installed and set up. Search for WooCommerce and then install and activate it. We're going to use the installation wizard to do most of our basic setup and then manually create a few products and categories to finish our plugin setup. Start by setting your home country and address. Your currency should automatically adjust and you can either leave usage tracking on or turn it off. Next, set up your payment gateways. In this tutorial, we're only going to be using cash on delivery to keep things simple. Next, set your shipping rates, and you can either leave ShipStation integration turned on or turn it off. We're also going to turn off automatic taxes and MailChimp, and then skip the Jetpack step. That's it for the setup wizard for us, so we'll go to the dashboard, and then from there we'll create our first category in WooCommerce. We'll call our category Electronics, and give it a name and slug. After that, we're going to create a second category called Accessories, and we'll also give that a name and slug. The next step after that is to create a product, which this time we'll call Keyboard. We're going to give it a description. This is an electronic keyboard. And then enter a price for it below. Put it in the Electronics category, and then hit Publish. Once you've done that, if you visit your shop page, you should see the keyboard displayed there. You can click on it to make sure that reviews integration worked correctly, and we'll go on from there. Next, let's add a status tracking plugin so that customers can track the status of their orders. Search status tracking and then install and activate the status and order tracking plugin. We'll skip the setup this time and instead head to the dashboard where we'll activate the seven day free trial. Next, go to the options page and select WooCommerce from the sidebar. Set WooCommerce integration to on, and then save changes. Go to the Pages menu, and add a new page which we'll label Status Tracking. Add in a tracking form block, and then publish that page. Once your page is published, copy the URL for your status tracking page. From there, head to Appearance, Customize, and select Tracking Page URL in the side. Paste in the link that you just copied, and then hit Publish. The last type of plugin to consider adding to your site is a Security Helper plugin. Two popular choices for that are WordFence and iTheme Security. We've linked to a helpful post on installing both of those in the video description below. That's it for the plugins we're going to be adding in this video. It probably makes sense to spend a bit of time setting up your FAQs at this point before moving on to the next video in our series, Finishing Touches for your site. We've also added links to some extra tutorials in case you'd like to familiarize yourself a bit more with the plugins we've just installed.